we're live. <laughs> Get my <laughs> going. And, uh, <laughs> okay, this, I have to say, you guys, I have this coolest witchy hat, which you can see here, um, but it does not fit over the headphones, so that's not going to happen today. But um, happy Halloween, a little bit early, everybody, from the back happy catalog Friday. of the party. Yeah, happy Friday. That's the most important part. Uh, my yeah. name is Mother Banjo. I am uh, Tone Lerone. <laughs> Today Anthony he is Eric. Anthony <laughs> Eric, and uh, he's dressed up as his '90s alternate self. And um, yep. and joining us today uh, from Massachusetts, Tracy Grammer. Hi, Tracy. Hello. <laughs> and uh, hello out there. A bunch of folks already rearing to go for Ready that catalog. To go. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Chicago, Chicago. We got Portland. Uh, we definitely have some Minneapolis. Hey, Connie. And uh, hi, Chris. Hey, Chris. Yeah, that's right. 45 degrees. So we've had a crazy set of weather for those of you not in the Twin Cities. On, I kind of gauge it from week to week by what's happening on back catalog. I feel like um, last Friday was snowing. The Friday before was like 85 degrees. And today it's 45 and sunny. So uh, let us know <laughs> how like you're doing. I know. <laughs> exactly. Um, so let us know how you're doing on this Friday, what the weather's like, what you're drinking, because it's um, it's our happy hour. Um, yes, and, it is. And uh, what do you have in your mysterious mug, Tracy? <laughs> this is um, the same thing I was drinking during our live stream a couple of days ago, which is, um, what is the proper name of it? It's some sort of tea. It's like positive energy, tangerine Ooh. tea. Yeah. Gets I you going. I should just be drinking that all the time these days. <laughs> positive energy. <laughs> I need some of that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. And what do you have, Ellen? Um, I have um, a cranberry apple whiskey cocktail happening. Oh, sort that's of seasonal awesome. happening. Yeah, and, I, was, um, I thought maybe it was like um, Halloween related. It looks very. Well, uh, uh, I guess you know, with being a witch, apples are kind of you know often with the lore of witches. But really, it's more just fall. I think it's is got really the right the color for <laughs> exactly blood or something something else. like that. And and I should say so. In addition to having my witchy self uh, ready today for back catalog. I, I, you know, nothing is scarier, as we all know, than a banjo player. And today we have two banjo players, obviously, Tony and myself. And I even have my picks on, <laughs> which I realize could be kind of scary in that same way. <laughs> um, well, and... <laughs> I'm, I'm going back to Fort Collins, Colorado, where uh, where the, my acoustic music journey started. I got my uh, my Lollapalooza T-shirt on and my uh, my ski goggles, my uh, <laughs> my beads and my doom back. <laughs> I'm 100 percent. You are back all and forth. in. I, nice. I had to go all in. It was a trip. It was super fun. But uh, I also that's where I discovered craft beer, though, um, was out there. And you could only get it in these 22 ounce sizes at the time. They didn't make them in cans or small bottles yet. And so for See, the that's occasion, what people don't remember all, is that, you know, uh, people talk about the good old days. But in terms of craft beer, <laughs> it was harder to get in those days. Right, Tony? Right, Tony LaRose? It it was. Well, cheers to you, Ellen. Cheers, cheers to you, Tracy. And cheers to all of you out there. Cheers. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for joining us today. I need this more than anything this week. And it's great to see you all out there. Star Trek Star drink. Star Trek drink. All right. Oh, that's awesome. Warp core. <laughs> that's super cool. Um, water. That is good, Molly. Always Excellent. good. Excellent. Yes, yes. And well, uh, Hannah's, Hannah's got the chocolate going. That's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. It's so good oh. to see all you here. Yeah. Yes. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Like, these are some longtime hardcore fans we have here. So this is fantastic. And Joe and Hannah and Bill King and Molly. It's great to see you guys. Thanks and for it, showing up. Yeah, it looks like we have Matt joining us from Urbana, Illinois. He said, oh, craft beer. I thought you said crap beer. Well, you know, <laughs> that's kind of the opposite of craft beer. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, but whatever you're drinking, we're happy to have you here. Join us today. If you're new to the back catalog listening party, this is our weekly happy hour. It's the one time of the week where Tony and I know what day and time it is, yes. 4 p.m. Central um, and uh, where we invite different artists onto the show to dig into one of their older releases. Uh, we listen to tunes together, talk about them, answer your questions. So if you have questions for Tracy as we go along today. Feel free to throw them in uh, the comments and uh, we'll get to as many of them as we can. We're so excited to have you on, Tracy, um, mainly, of course, because I'm a huge fan and because the release you picked is uh, 20 years old this year. I can't even believe it. Tanglewood Tree. <laughs> it's 
scares me just a little to think that that. <laughs> Speaking of yeah. scary things, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. It, it doesn't feel that old when I listen to it. It doesn't sound particularly dated to me. It's just sort of, it's just sort of frozen in its little bubble back there in, in at the turn of the century. Yeah. So. Simpler times. And um, I will, uh, let's, for folks maybe, I know that you have a lot of um, longtime fans who've tuned in, but for folks who maybe aren't as familiar with your music, do you want to give maybe a brief bio and in particular kind of what led to the release of this record that you put out with uh, Dave Carter? Well, this is a record that I made with the late and great songwriter Dave Carter, who died in 2002. Uh, we made three records together, and this was the um, the first one we made in my kitchen. And uh, and it, it did really well. And so it got the attention of a record label, Signature Sounds, who uh, then offered to put out our next two records. Um, so, so this is our first like sort of big national release. This was our first studio album. This uh, was the first time that we enlisted players that we didn't know to join us in our musical adventures. <laughs> so this was a, a big risky thing for us. And we made this not in our hometown of Portland, Oregon at the time, but we made it actually closer to where I live now in Palmer, Massachusetts at the Signature Sound Studio. So we were away from home, playing with people we'd never met before, making a record. The stakes felt really high for this one. And... Uh, but but it all turned out really well. It ended up being the most played album on folk radio that year. And um, people said nice things about it. Yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I can't wait to dive more into these songs. And um, I'm really excited because I know you pulled out some cool um, archival materials to accompany today's uh, conversation as well. So, um, well, the first song we have queued up to talk about is uh, Tanglewood Tree, the title track. Um, is there anything you want to tell us about the song before we dig in? Um, well, I think if we're going to play the intro for this one, we have an intro for this one. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe we just let that stand. All right. Okay. And this is Dave Carter yeah. doing the intro, and then uh, and then we'll jump into the song right after that. Tracy and I are, on the other hand, are terribly neurotic. There are reasons for that. <laughs> because in our unfortunate life experience, we have often found out that this may come as a surprise to y'all, but love don't always turn out the way it ought to. Love is like a seed that you plant somewhere. And once planted, given any kind of care or nurturing or even just a little blind, dumb luck, love is just about bound to blossom and grow into a magnificent flower. But the problem with love, my friends, is that it don't stay that way. The problem with love is it just keeps on growing and growing till it gets all gnarly and weird. This is a song about that. It's kind of like our Everly Brothers meets John Bradshaw kind of love song. <laughs> we call it Love is a Tanglewood Tree. All right, here's Tanglewood Tree. Tracy Grammer, Dave Carter on the back catalog listening party. Is a tangled tree in a bower of grain in a forest of dawn. Fair while the mockingbird sings, but she soon lifts her wings and the music is gone. Young lovers in the tall grass with their hearts open wide when the red summer poppies bloom but love is a trackless domain and the rumor of rain in the late afternoon love is an old root that creeps through the meadows of sleep when long shadows cast Thin as a vagrant young vine It encircles and twines And it holds a heart fast 
Catch the streamers in the wild wood with the stars in their eyes and the moon in their tiles of soul here. But love is a light in the sky and an unspoken line and a half whispered prayer. Tracy Grammer and Dave Carter from their 2000 release Tanglewood Tree here on the back catalog listening party getting kind of good spooky vibes on that tune gnarly and weird (laughs) as Dave introduced (laughs) the song and joining us today of course on the back catalog listening party is Tracy Grammer to talk about this record and yeah it does have you know some a lot of Dave Carter's songs had kind of that sort of spooky vibe uh and and that's definitely captured in that production on that song yeah yeah um i'm seeing a question from david he wants to know where that was recorded let me see if i can figure it out here um i can tell you when i don't think i wrote down where um it was october 28th of 2000 i will look that up for you um (laughs) But the, I was, I first, I was using a, an intro from a Georgetown, California show. I think that one might have been in Chicago, actually. Um, that seems right to me, in Hinsdale, Chicago. Don't quote me on that. Um, oh, I'm glad you picked up the Jimi Hendrix, Lin- Linda. Yeah, there's, at the end, <laughs> Dave, Dave's vision for the song was that it was going to be like, Krishnamurti meets Jimi Hendrix. And so we have the two intertwining quotes at the end, um, uh, the Jimi Hendrix, like kind of echoey things at the end there. So I don't know, pretty kooky, but, um, but a special song, you know, especially for that counterpoint in there where the two, the two melodies are intertwining, obviously like a Tanglewood tree. Right. Uh, (laughs) um, And, uh, and his, his, uh, I remember him talking about counterpoint and saying that um, he learned to do it in college. Actually, he he studied music, he studied math, he studied a whole bunch of different things. But um, the the counterpoint was a thing he had just internalized along the way. And um, <clears throat> and what he used to emphasize about writing counterpoint for anybody who's interested in trying it is that the two the two voices really should not be able to stand on their own. They really must interlock in a way they shouldn't sound complete by themselves so i thought that was an interesting little tidbit because i in my mind i thought oh it should be two melodies that can stand you know and then it's just cool if they happen to flow but not in this case so not not the way dave wrote it so that's actually an interesting question because um as as you mentioned earlier dave passed in 2002 
And uh, there are many Dave Carter songs that you will obviously sing on tour, um, but I'm guessing this is not one of those because it's hard to sing <laughs> those parts, right? Yeah, I do get requests for it. And I'm just like, people, you're missing the point. <laughs> I'm like, it's a tanglewood tree. You need two to tangle. Like, I, I mean, actually, the truth is I could tangle with myself and I do often, but nobody <laughs> wants to see me do that on stage. So, um, yeah, so I've never performed that one as a solo. And, and I have seen, some, but I saw somebody do it in Portland, Oregon, and I just thought, eh, without the counterpoint, it, it's, not, it's not complete. So. Mm -hmm. Plus, also, Dave just had a real thing. Of, he was just a real stickler about his arrangements, you know, and uh, he would not approve of the solo version. <laughs> somebody mentioned in the comments here the arrangements, and I also just picked up on just, I mean, how much they kind of create each song. Like, there's great lyrics and great music, but it's really like the, the layering and all the little pieces that come together. Was that something that you guys did together, or was that primarily Dave or you, or, or how did that work? Um, Dave would have, Dave, the way it works, and, and for this album, again, it was different, right? Because we had a band for the first time. We had access to other inspirations, other impulses, you know? Actually, drummer Lauren Entrist had a, played a big role in shaping how, how these songs came out, as you'll hear in some of the other ones. The loops he added and the hand drum on the mountain. You know, it's just like, we didn't know what all was possible. We didn't know what we were going to have at our disposal. But I think... Dave had sort of like the composer's eagle eye view of what the song should be. And I felt like I had more of like the hands on, you know, especially in mixing, like uh, a little of that there, take that out there, you know, like more of the details. Yeah. So in that way, we balanced each other really well in terms of the arrangements. But um, for this one, he definitely wrote that violin solo, and it's like on paper, this is what you'll play, you know? Okay. But everything in between was mine, you know? So just little little comments that I would make, that those were my decisions, so. And we really compliment each other. That's great. Oh, thanks. And, and for those, uh, for people who might not know or have the liner notes in front of them, uh, again, you play all, uh, all the violin parts, I think, on the record, right, Tracy? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, uh, but you also play mandolin and guitar. And and what is Dave playing in addition to guitar? Is he playing any other instruments? What is Dave playing? He is. He's playing the banjo. Mm -hmm. He plays the piano, as we'll hear. And he plays the Hammond organ as well. Nice. So wonderful. Yeah. And uh, and who are the other instrumentals? You mentioned Lauren Entress. Uh, who are the other folks that play on this record? Yeah, so luckily I have this here because I haven't seen I haven't seen some of these guys since. Um, <laughs> we have Bob Dick on upright bass, um, the amazing Richard Gates on electric bass. Uh, we had Chris Turner in for harmonica and Roger Williams, the great Roger Williams on dobro. Oh, nice. So, yeah, yeah. So we had a just a great crew of people to work with, and um, it was it was really really magical. Mm, that's wonderful. Uh, well, we have uh, the next song we have queued up is uh, a fan favorite for sure. And uh, a lot of um, is this one of the ones that Joan Baez covered? This is. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll just never forget why I walked into Dave's little office there in our shared house that actually my friend Eric Park is online. We were living at Eric Park's house for a year and uh, he had left. He bought a new house. He let us live in the old house. And I went down into the office where Dave was working. Dave was on the phone with somebody. And I could tell by the way he was talking that it was like he was being kind of stiff, you know, and kind of like, but also sort of like weirdly passive, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. And so I, I went down there. I was eavesdropping. And and uh, he covered up the, this is back when we had handheld phones. He covered up the phone and he goes, Mark Spector, Mark Spector, who was Joan Baez's manager. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Who are you talking to and why, you know? And then he gets off the phone and then Dave used to have all these characters that he would do. So there was one called the American Businessman. <laughs> so he would like, he would just take the phone and he just like made a real big show about putting it back in its cradle. And then he's like, ah. yeah, that was biased people, you know, like that was biased people. And I'm like, what do they want? What do they want? And he's like, She's singing our song, you know, and I'm just like, what are you talking about? So we find out that Joan Baez has begun singing the song. We didn't know how she got it. We don't know anything about like who funneled that song, how it got her attention. 
But what she would say about Dave's writing eventually is that um, like Dylan, and she made that comparison, um, the songs were very accessible to her. So they just spoke to her in a way and she felt like they were songs that she could sing, that she could deliver in a true way. And so this song began a tremendous relationship with Joan, with Joan Baez and the opportunity to later to do a big like 32 date bus tour with her and just, you know, the adventure of a lifetime. When I say that our careers were accelerated, that just everything happened I mean, it kind of had to, right? Because Dave was only going to be here until 2002. Like, we just had the best ride in that little four-year period that we were kind of a national act. So, but yeah, this is the one that kicks it off with, you know, with the Joan Baez thing. Pretty amazing. That's cool. And this, this we also have an intro for this, which was, was really interesting to hear after um, listening to the song a few times, not knowing much. Um, about about this record even, this intro really spoke to me and I'm excited for everybody else to hear it as well. So this is uh, Dave Carter uh, doing a little intro to the mountain here on the back end of the listening party. So uh, my sister called me up and she said, well, there's this great physicist, Richard Feynman, and they're going to do a special about him on PBS and you gotta, you got to get your TV out of the closet and watch it. So so uh, she said, this guy is really cool and you got to watch this. So I watched this and this was shortly after Feynman had died and he said well he just got on this rap he just got on this kind of crazy but beautiful and totally true and logical rap talking about how well really you know everything that we think we see and everything that we perceive as an object is just waves and waves and it's all waves going into waves and we're all waves reacting with waves and, and I thought man that's just you know trippy but true you know it's just a really cool, a cool way to think of the universe and uh, and that night, I uh, had a dream. I dreamed that there was this, uh, this woman. And uh, I would sing through her eyes in parts of the dream. She lived on a little old, in, on a mountain. I lived in a little old cabin on the side of a mountain. And that mountain looked down into a valley. And on the other side of the valley was another mountain. And in that dream, I became that woman. And I walked out there on that porch. And down underneath that porch, I realized, hey, there's a lot of bugs crawling around down there. And I realized that, hey, there's a lot of bugs crawling around in the trees, and there's snakes, and there's uh, critters and animals, and everything is alive. Everything is alive. And, you know, y'all live out here. You don't need to know that that's more than just a dream. <laughs> and, uh, and so through that woman's eyes, I looked out. I looked out over the, uh, I looked out over the, the valley and across to the mountain and I saw the wind blowing the waves and the grass and I saw that grass coming in waves, waves of light and waves of this or that, things beyond description or discrimination coming at me. And I had this great experience, an experience which I can only call the experience of grace. And I remember how my mother, my mother who was definitely not a mathematician but was an evangelist, and she said, Grace. She used to always teach us that grace is a gift. Grace is not earned by good works. So it was like uh, my mother and my father speaking together in my head in a way that, uh, that uh, maybe they had not really done in real life, but it came, well, maybe that's the real life anyway. <laughs> Anyhow, so this is a song about grace, and it's about that dream, and it's about the rational and the mystical, and it's called The Mountain. All right, let's listen to it now. This is Tracy Grammer, Dave Carter, The Mountain on the Back Catalog Listening Party. I was born in a fork tongue story, raised up by merchants and drugstore liars. Now I walk on the Thank 
Dave Carter and Tracy Grammer with The Mountain from their 2000 release, Tanglewood Tree. And uh, Tracy Grammer joining us today on the Back Catalog Listening Party on this Halloween edition, hence my witchy self and uh, Anthony <laughs> Eric's 90s Colorado <laughs> ski bum self. And Tracy Grammer playing the part of Tracy Grammer today. And um, I think uh, that song in particular uh, is such a, a Dave Carter song. Like I can't. I don't know anyone else who could have written a song like that. It's such a, and as he, as he introduced the song, as he said, it's sort of like all these different elements coming to life. And, um, and I love uh, the percussion in that, not just the drums at the end, but the, during the song, there's like the, some little things that sound like crickets or cicadas in there. And uh, it just mm -hmm. feels crawling with life. It's, it's yeah, really cool. And the same thought. Yeah. Lauren did such a great job and it was such a leap of faith for us too, because a lot of the little doodads that, that you hear like that were done back at Lauren's home studio. So he would like, we worked with him and then while we were tracking other things, he'd be working on, on parts to this and I think to walking away from Caroline also. And, and that was a huge leap of faith for us to just let somebody run with a little piece of our song. You know, I mean, obviously we had veto power, but I think everything he brought back, we were just like, how did you know that's just what it needed you know and one of the moments that i love the most in that song is there's a um there's a shaker that pans all the way across you know it's just very satisfying if you're in headphones and you hear that thing move across it's i just love that moment yeah. um, and i should we should tell folks out there that if you're you know if you're joining us on youtube uh, live right now or or later listening through the time space continuum to the replay <laughs> um that yeah to put on headphones because youtube does broadcast in stereo now and so you can hear some of those effects um, but if you want of course the high audio file version you can order the cd is still available and on tracy's website as well as other places um because it sounds amazing so it, um it really does and, and since we're on that topic, one of the missions here at the Back Catalog Listening Party is to uh, is to let musicians and artists that we love know how much we appreciate what they do and how much we understand this is a difficult time right now when nobody is playing live. So if you're out there listening, um, 
we have a tip jar where we'd like to pass around right now. Um, we have a PayPal link and we have a Venmo handle and uh, that'll be in the comments. And uh, if you want uh, to let Tracy know how much you appreciate her music and how, how much you'd like to hear that music continue, toss a little something in there. Um, it goes a long way um, for, for artists right now. For sure. And uh, we had a few, a lot of comments and questions about this song. Um, uh, H. Wilder was asking about the Sumerian line. Uh, and maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah, that yeah. That's Hannah in Santa Fe. Um, uh, so the Sumerian, um, you know, Dave, with Tanglewood Tree, we sort of wanted this to be maybe the world's first Buddhist country record. So, <laughs> so the idea with a little Hendrix thrown in. Um, so at the end of this song, he really, he really wanted to write in a Buddhist mantra, you know, to bring in this sort of otherworldly feel, you know, but he, he went through the Sanskrit, he went through the mantras that he knew and he couldn't find anything that scanned quite right. So he, I've told this story before, but he let his fingers do the walking. Um, he went on the internet and looked up Sumerian.org where there is a Sumerian lexicon. Um, <laughs> the trouble with Sumerian is that no one knows how to really pronounce it. Um, and so, but anyway, he just pieced together a little, uh, a little mantra, you know, that, um, that said what he wanted to say, um, which in this case, the translation is, um, endless mountain of cedar trees, forest of light, forest of light, endless mountain of cedar trees, I walk alone, I walk alone. So um, the song um, really wants to, you know, it's sort of not religion, but spirituality. That's where we're headed with the whole album is, you know, looking at all these trappings and then really distilling it down to, to the essential spirituality in each of us. And so I, I should also add that um, the reason I included that intro is that it is very interesting to me now to hear Dave say that he was looking through the eyes of a woman in a dream. Um, at that time, I did not know that Dave was considering a gender transition, that this was, that he had this dysmorphia or yeah. And, and that it, it was a, you know, in a couple of months, he would let me know about that, but I didn't know it then. And so, as I was listening to some things in preparation for this show, it's just, it's fascinating to me that there were just, he's just, he was doing the work personally and dropping hints along the way, but I had no idea, you know, I had, I just thought, oh, Dave dreamed he was a woman. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> But he really dreamed he was a woman, you know, like wow. I think there was more to it. I think he was just leaking it out there and in, in the most subtle of ways, you know, mm. again, shattering illusion, doing his little bit, you know, his little like, it's like a needle in a field of ice, but there he was tapping, you know, <laughs> making his mark. So um, well, and it's, it's interesting you say, uh, talking about how he dreamed that um, you've mentioned before, um, in other conversations that uh, Dave really channeled that dream life quite a bit in his songwriting. Yeah, it was essential to his songwriting. And part of the reason that he was so frustrated toward the end of his life and so tired was that he didn't get to dream enough. He didn't get to write enough because we were just working nonstop, touring, 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 boom, boom, boom. And uh, yeah, it was. It got to the point where I basically did the driving and I was like, you just rest in the passenger seat there. Just You just recline, here's a blanket, just go to sleep, think of some songs, you know? <laughs> Let me know when you when you have something. And he always had, he, he'd sleep with like a notebook on his chest, you know, in the passenger seat of the car, and get up and start scribbling things down. But yeah, the dream, the dream realm was rich for Dave. He knew how to mine it, he was trained in that. Um, and, and I think he, I think he was highly successful. I mean, he brought us back gold, endless gold from his dream world. Well, mm. speaking of scribbling down notes and things, one of the interesting things that you sent in advance uh, for this episode was kind of a list of, of some brainstorm stuff for <laughs> the album, about the album. Um, and it's just such a cool thing to see that kind of history. And uh, I was wondering if you would mind if, if we shared that with folks. If oh, yeah, sure. Oh, fantastic. Sure. So it says album planning notes is, is what we got here. And, and I'd love to hear what was going through your mind right now as you approach this record. Yeah, this was so funny to find. I just found this last night. And it's, it's curious to me to see um, what we thought were contenders for this album. There's a song on there. I have no idea what it is. I don't know what trial is. 
you know, it says country next to it. I have no idea, <laughs> no idea what that is. I see some on there that we did record. I, I think it's interesting that we, we thought that um, there were, there were some conflicts on there, you know, things that we shouldn't put together on an album. So these were the considerations um, and the questions at the bottom, what is our direction? And if we call it Tanglewood tree, how can we, you know, use that as a, as a concept to build the album around. Um, but yeah, there were, you know, we had a, he had a huge list of songs. Some of those songs um, never quite fully manifested like airport road, never really manifested. Um, trying to see what else is on the Kiaway that <laughs> I, you know, he, every time he said Kiaway, he would go like this. Cause apparently that's a Kiaway <laughs> greeting. And I'm, just like, so I'm seeing him in my head doing that. Um, but yeah, and then there's other songs. Girl from Golden, we never recorded. Some of them, some of the other ones ended up on later, on later works. But yeah, there was a huge list. Um, I just think it's so fascinating to hear, like you know, the conceptual piece. You know that mm-hmm. if we call it Tanglewood Tree, what does that mean for, for this mm-hmm. project? You know, I know a lot of art at least the best art I think oftentimes has constraints, you know, you could have a huge list of songs like this and uh, you need something to bind them all together. And- Absolutely. Yeah. You've got to have a container, you know? And so I think, I think ultimately what the container was partly was this idea of, um, you know, the Buddhist country record, like, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> how can we, how can we make that happen? But then also the idea of shattering illusion, you know, in a lot of the songs you have, you have, characters involved in some sort of in some sort of dream realm and they're building something that just isn't real or they're adhering to some path that is unsustainable and in the end they find you know they find themselves back in 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 more of a it find a spiritual center rather than all these you know external things or relationship things or whatever so well, that's a perfect transition to our next song that we're going to listen to, um, talking about someone uh, who uh, is a fan of the illusion, the Crocodile Man. Uh, is there anything you want to say about this song before we dig in? Oh, about Crocodile Man? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, this is sort of an anti-hero song. Um, Dave, Dave described this as a and again, in another one of these intros said, this is a person of indiscriminate gender. And I'm like, what, what, how did I forget that he ever said this? Like, this is so interesting to me. Um, but he decided to have me sing it. It, it, uh, and, uh, and again, it's, it's one of these where you like, you descend. And if you look at the lyrics, you know, we, we end up, you know, in this field, like, and there's a thatched roof and then you're in this house and there's a hall of mirrors and, you know, but mama knows exactly where you've been. There's your truth. You know what I mean? Like somebody has witnessed you and it's your mama. <laughs> she knows what you have to. And so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, it was the first kind of hit from the album. It was the first song to get a lot of traction, probably just cause it's so weird. You know, the, the vocals on the, uh, on the verses were sung through the bottom of a paper cup into a microphone oh, wow. to get that sort of canned. We tried everything on the board to try like, how do we get that AM radio sound? And then someone looked over at the water cooler and pulled out a cup and was like, try this. And we did. <laughs> and it worked. Analog solution. I love it. I love yeah. It. Yeah. Pretty low tech there, you know? <laughs> Did, did I, I, I was, when I was doing some research for this, I, I, I came across a YouTube clip of you guys doing this together. And he mentioned the story being somewhat inspired by um, a run-in with a country singer um, uh, who was hitchhiking. <laughs> did, could you elaborate on that story at all? Is, do you have, do you want to share that? I thought you know, that was fascinating. I can't verify the story. Dave is pretty <laughs> famous for his tall tales, but he probably was hitchhiking on the Turner Turnpike with his cello because he was studying cello in music school. You got to pick an instrument that's not your first instrument. Um, and he said he was picked up by Merle Haggard, who was in some sort of duster, you know, Plymouth duster, and every telling it changed colors. Sometimes it was green, <laughs> sometimes it was purple. It always had a big old blower on the front. And, uh, and, and apparently the line is that Merle pulled up to Dave to pick him up on the road and then said, I thought that was a shell. I thought that was a guitar or I wouldn't have pulled over. <laughs> and then he just took pity on Dave. He was like, get on in, you know? And so, <laughs> 
So Dave, um, but I, I don't really know how that relates to this song, except that it was his brush with, you know, <laughs> country stardom. But he did feel inspired. Dave did feel inspired to um, to write what he said was uh, to contribute to what he called country music's gator repertoire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Doesn't exist. So maybe he was trying to start one. <laughs> I, I don't know how well that's going, but um, and here it is. The repertoire of one, I guess, is, is what he came up with. Well, it's it's a it's a really a, amazing tune, and uh, I can't wait for everybody to hear it. This is Tracy Grammer with Dave Carter, Crocodile Man on the Back Catalog Listening Party. <laughs> <coughs> She raised me on riddles and trances Fat back channel cat, lily white lies Rock my cradle in a jimmy crack fancy Never knew papa and I never asked why And a people say papa wasn't no account anyway People say papa was a rolling stone While well, I turned 20 on the whack-a-moth throughway Hitching up river in the dark alone Sleeping with a stranger in a no-name town Thanksgiving dinner at the top hat lounge Christmas Eve at the Fantasy Channel Lord have mercy on the crocodile man Lord have mercy on the crocodile man Well, I hooked up with a carny A little out of Memphis Slaving in a sideshow Pennies in a jar Beetle-eyed jokers and Hicktown princes Rhinestone rubies and rubber cigars Wrassled me a gator of an Omaha city Did me another den in New Orleans Tangled with a barker, run off with a kitty Crawled the Mississippi and I got away clean Sleeping with a stranger in a no-name town Thanksgiving dinner, top hat now Christmas Eve at the Fantasy Town Lord have mercy on the crocodile man Lord have mercy on the crocodile man Hidden in the shadow of a shady grove There's a thatched roof rising from a poke fence picket White smoke billows from a kettle black stove Inside the house is the hall of mirrors Inside the mirror is the temple of sin Inside the temple is the face of mama And mama she know just where I've been Yeah, my mama know exactly where her bad boy been Huh Stranger in a no-name town Thanksgiving dinner at the top hat man Christmas Eve at the Fantasy Town oh, Lord have mercy on the crocodile man 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 uh, Dave Carter and Tracy Grammer on Crocodile Man from their 2000 release, Tanglewood Tree. Tracy Grammer is joining us today on the Back Catalog Listening Party as we talk about this uh, record that came out 20 years ago. And uh, that song, I feel like you were talking about how uh, you guys saw this as your, your Buddhist country record. And I also feel like <laughs> this song channels that swampy, as you said, AM radio vibe, but also like, um, you know, I... I hear so much of that sort of southern country music in in your music obviously you got your start in portland but you have some southern roots right tracy well i was born in florida i guess that's the sound <laughs> but um but i grew up listening to country sure mm -hmm. you know my parents you know that's what they were into and so i i was all about the willie and the merle and the whale and you know and the statler brothers and the Oak Ridge boys and all those guys um <clears throat> growing up so um it was it was uh, kind of a match made in heaven, really, to meet someone like Dave Carter, who had these country sensibilities and wanted to write in this country vein, but also came from a classical background, which I had too. You know, I had I was raised. I started playing violin at the age of nine and came up, you know, all through orchestras, <clears throat> both in school and then you know some extracurricular orchestras as well. And so we both had that classical sensibility of 
you know, everything has its place and, and the arrangements and it's not just a free for all, you know, it, 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 the, these things belong in a certain place and serve a certain function, um, the instruments and the parts and there's dynamics and, you know, it's a, it's a thing like you play the music in a certain way. Um, but we also, but we also just loved like trying to be country singers. So it was, it was just, it was really kind of the, the best of both worlds right there, you know, mm -hmm. all of it together. I love the harmonica on that. I just never get over the harmonica on that. And, uh, and there's this little moment, I think my favorite moment is that um, when we mixed this song, we all had our hands on the board. Everybody had a job to do because this was before, before <laughs> we did Pro Tools. Yeah, we <laughs> didn't have a computer to mix this on. Yeah. So everyone had their hands on a track. There were a lot of tracks on this song. And I was in charge of the solo. And so there's a little thing that happens at the end of the solo where Dave pulls his finger off and it makes a little eek. It makes a little squeak. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. So I remember, I specifically remember like, like doing that, like, <laughs> nice. like cause I wanted to hear it. And I'm like, no, we have to do it over. Cause I got to get that squeak. Right. And it's just like, I don't know, it's little things that come back, you know, 20 years ago, feels like yesterday. Uh, someone, Molly pointed out that, uh, this is the one in the songbook that says diddly esque. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Dave had his, he was getting his Bo diddly on there. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Chris said, uh, first her Crocodile Man covered by Chris Smither. Uh, love his version as well. And uh, yeah, this has been a very popular song to cover. And um, in fact, Tony, a.k.a. Tone Marone <laughs> today here on the Back Kettle Listening Party. Um, I'm, plays in I'm, a, regret, a, I'm regretting this decision. Like, <laughs> it has well, these luckily, wonderful stories and this beautiful music. And it's it's all so profound. And, and I'm looking and at myself. And you're wearing your 90s ski bum self. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Well, uh, well, in another world, when he's Anthony Erig, he plays in a bluegrass band called the High 48s, and they recently in quarantine covered a version of this song as well. And um, so awesome. yeah, this is a this is a pretty um, song that a lot of folks have gravitated to to cover. So yeah, well, it's, it's so really fun. Too. I mean, you know, it's just so fun. And the words, you know, the words are really um, they're amazing. Those lyrics are amazing. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, if folks have questions for Tracy, we don't have a ton of time left. So definitely throw in any comments, questions uh, that you have in, in the comments. And um, we will try and get to as many of them as we can. And uh, this next song we have queued up is Walking Away from Caroline. Um, is there I know there's an intro from Dave for this one as well. Is there anything you want to say about it or just leave it to Dave? Well, um, one thing he doesn't mention in this intro I don't know why he we didn't play this song out that often actually um i would always bug him to do it because i thought it it um kind of we we had quiet songs and then we had a lot of frenetic songs like crocodile man and hey conductor and cat eye willie and preston mill and so i like to bring the energy down sometimes which is what walking away from caroline does it's a very spacious song with a very spacious finger picking and a very light accompaniment to it um but uh and so he would <laughs> he would always resist because he thought we had to make noise anyway <laughs> um he he told a story a few times where he said that this was written about a stalker that he had had hmm. um and i i know who this person was it was a, a fellow music teacher who um i think they they kind of met at a music store and maybe they you know like oh you're you teach that i teach that too you know like they both had private piano students or something and, um, and maybe a little relationship, a little flirtation ensued. And then maybe there was a date or two. And then Dave was like, no, I don't think so, you know, except that she didn't get the message really. And, and then it, and, and she was suffering with a bit of mental illness at the time. And so maybe at some point a brick went through a window, you know, like it, it got pretty intense. Um, somehow that figures into this song. You know, but he, but he did tell that story a couple of times where he's like, you know, I used to have a stalker. Although Dave, you know, he was he was often pursued in Portland. It's very there's, there's a lot of stories about this. It's, it's very interesting to me. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, piano piano student mothers <laughs> were fond of were greatly fond of Dave <laughs> and would would invite him to hang around after the lesson was over. You know. <laughs> Can well, I get you some tea? <laughs> <laughs> and by tea, I mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
All right, well, let's listen to Dave's intro uh, for Walking Away from Carolina, and then we'll, we'll, we'll jump into the song. It's a song about modern love. It's a song about um, how maybe you want something to be true, but it ain't really true, and how uh, maybe just to kind of get the true thing rolling, you predicate it on something that's maybe not really quite a true story. And you uh, pile falsehood upon falsehood until you have an entire beautiful palace of lies, but one day it all comes tumbling down around your head. It's called Walking Away from Caroline. All right, here's Walking Away from Caroline, Tracy Grammer, Dave Carter on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Puts Dylan on She always sings along She gets the words All wrong She falls at a time But it sounds just fine Caroline says no one else could take my place She says It's my honest face And my simple heart And my constant mind Man, I'm as fickle As a ten-cent knife I'm an anchorless vessel on the ocean of life And I'm walking away from Caroline Caroline says that it ain't no good to shout She don't want to be drawn out She's a one-eyed witch In a world gone blind and Caroline says No one else could understand How she's a woman And she a man. She's a gust of wind She's a creeping fine Man, all I know Is that life ain't fair And it's four in the morning And I just don't care I'm walking away from Caroline And 
it's no one's crying and Caroline swears she says I love you man I know she's lying cause I'm lying too and I'm walking away from Caroline Love that all the endings to these songs are it's like you have to wait for that last note uh, yeah. before talking um that is uh walking away from caroline uh from dave carter and tracy grammer's 2000 release tanglewood tree tracy grammer joining us today on back catalog listening party talking about the yeah. record and we got a few questions uh that came in that i want to make sure we get to answer um of course uh we had two questions about this gay and marcia asking about the cover art for this album oh yeah yeah so this is uh this is a collage this was our first um first time getting someone else to do the artwork this is an artist recommended to us by lisa lapine who was our manager at the time and this is um by marcy roth uh in portland and basically you know she just listened to the songs and she she pulled out images that you know um that that spoke to her. Of course, we have a little train there for Hay Conductor, and we've got some mountains in the background, and the poppies, the red summer poppies bloom right up the middle of it, you know. Um, probably Cat Eye Willie hanging there in the tree, you know. <laughs> probably Bonnie Brown there in the middle with a, with a flower in her eye. Um, but it's, it's, not, it's not particularly, like, you know, obtuse. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Just, this is just what spoke to her. Um, Theater curtains, you know, as a as a means of introduction, sort of like, and now announcing <laughs> Dave and Tracy <laughs> on the national stage. That's always a good way to do it. Um, yeah, so nothing particularly coy. All the all the photos were by Brent Hyrak, and uh, of course we have the Lotus in there because it's a Buddhist country album. After all, I'm sure you knew that. But <laughs> I just want to say, I want to say about Caroline that. Um, you know, that's Dave playing the piano in there so beautifully. And Richard Gates came up with that bass line where he stopped the notes. You know, they don't ring out. He doesn't go boom, boom, and let it ring. It's like boom, boom. We weren't sure what to do with the song. You know, we were, we were, we really struggled on how to actually produce it. But Lauren came up with it, you know, that little loop thing that kind of mm -hmm. goes through. And then Richard, <clears throat> instead of coming in at the top, he waits. And then he comes in with just this almost like techno sounding, you know, bass part. It's just like doom, doom, and then it's out, doom, doom, and it really it just opened up the song for us. We were so happy when he yeah, did it's that. It's funny you mentioned the techno because I I will say when that section comes in, it feels more like a pop song a little bit in the production in a weird way. Uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I could hear that I, influence. I really love Dave's vocal on that one. I think I feel like it's one of his most honest vocals, you know. And I love, I love as I was singing it. Of course, I felt like I was playing the part of Caroline, you know, just sort of whimpering and <laughs> whining in the background, <laughs> whispering in his ear, you know, uh, helping him build up the the illusion just so we could tear it down. But, <laughs> well, we had. Um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I, we had a, a couple other questions. One uh, was about uh, a tribute album. Um, a da David was asking about uh, whether there was any plans at any point to do a Dave Carter tribute that there, I know that had been talked about. Yeah, there's so many, there's so many projects like this that have, um, <laughs> that have come, you know, into consciousness and then sort of faded away, mainly because I'm, a one person team, you know, and it's like, yeah. uh, but I think I do believe that signature sounds is still interested in doing something like that. And, um, you know, I could see it coming out in 2022. That would be the 20th, 20th anniversary of his passing. That would make a lot of sense. Um, it's, it's still on the table. You know what I mean? All these things are still on the table. I saw Marsha was asking about a Dave intros project and, I have to say that this back catalog listening party 
got me to open up my right. my big box of, of old live recordings and which I had sitting on, on the landing of the stairs for like six months. I was like, I'm going to do this during quarantine. Fantastic. And then I haven't been doing it, but now I'm all motivated. So yes. all right. <laughs> nice. That makes me so yeah, happy. Yeah, it really dovetails nicely with the memoir work that I'm doing, you know, because I've got it in a kind of a, a standstill with that as well, you know, not really knowing and needing some shape for it. You know, like how much of the story to tell? When does it start? When does it end? And um, this is really inspiring. So I'm really glad that you guys asked me to come on because it, it got me to go back into this old stuff and really see what a rich story we had and what a, what a rich journey we had. Mm -hmm. Well, we're so grateful oh, for your yeah. time. It, this has been a wonderful hour. I could wonderful. probably do another hour or two. <laughs> sure. And <laughs> Maybe I after say, the memoir comes out. Exactly. And I will say... Um, Folks, keep throwing your comments. Also throw them on our Facebook page as well. And uh, we actually might share some other images that we didn't get a chance to share here on the show uh, that Tracy dug up. So you can go over to the Back Catalog Listening Party Facebook page, like us there, follow us there. Um, and yeah, of course, it, subscribe here on the YouTube channel so you can find out about um, our our future guests. Uh, yeah, we're recent transplants here to YouTube. So if you if you liked what you heard today, give this at least this episode a thumbs up for us if you would, because mm -hmm. um, that tells the algorithms, you know, that uh, <laughs> there's some good content here, um, you know, for folk music uh, fans. So yeah, for sure. And uh, we also want to encourage all of you to, to, to throw something in Tracy's tip jar. Uh, she does do a monthly live stream is where you can catch her uh, next November 17th, 2 p.m. Central Time. Uh, 3 p.m. in her Massachusetts time. And yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can catch her there. Um, and usually that broadcasts on YouTube as well on the Jim Henry channel. Um, but if you follow her on the socials, she'll let you know about it. And um, yep. and we also want to thank everyone. Uh, thanks, Linda. We want to thank all of you for tuning in and especially our um, patrons. Uh, we have a Patreon uh, as we look to build out the Back Catalog Listening Party to be on more platforms and to develop a real website to archive all this great content. I want to thank Penny, Anne, Alinda, Bevan, Connie, Vaughn, Alan, Chris, Alex, Becky, Galen, Peggy, and Joe, our newest patron who came in last week. So if you uh, want to... Thank you guys um, so much. Back, uh, ...back the Back Catalog Listening Party, you can do that. Either way, we appreciate you all being here and especially you, Tracy. This has been so much fun. Oh my God. It was super fun. This you guys been... got me all inspired. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. So um, I do see uh, someone on an iPad didn't see the tip charts in the comments. You can scroll through the live mm -hmm. comments and uh, and click right on that. And uh, thank you guys so much. And thanks again, Tracy. This is this has been a, a wonderful, wonderful hour of music and conversation. Mm -hmm. And all right. thank you. And have Until... a great Halloween, everybody. And yes. Uh... And yeah, we'll, we'll, and we'll all see... survive the election, I hope. Yes, and we'll see you back <laughs> next Friday. Yeah, oh vote if you haven't voted. Vote, vote, vote. Right, um, in person. Yes, uh, next <laughs> Friday at uh, 4 p.m. Central, we'll be back here uh, with another guest, some jazz mandolin, I think, is yeah, coming our way next Don week. Yeah, Sternberg, uh, one of wow. uh, probably the jazz mandolinist um, of our time. He's uh, from Chicagoland and just a, a fantastic uh, musician, played uh, with Robbie Folks uh, and uh, just wonderful, wonderful jazz musician. So stay so tuned. So that's next week. And we'll be back in our normal selves, Mother Banjo, not as a witchy woman. And uh, Anthony <laughs> and me Gary, definitely not as Not this guy. as, oh, as man, the 90s ski bum that he I'm going to be regretting was. this. This has been a, such a special episode and it'll be forever. <laughs> Mark. Oh, well, no, you know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, my, I hope you all, if you guys have Halloween costumes, by the way, if you did dress up, <laughs> feel free to share them on our Facebook page because uh, we want to see what you dressed up for as Halloween. So, yeah, if the, uh, the best costume to be shared on our Facebook page gets a prize. Mm -hmm. well, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we can't right. guarantee what it is. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. And Tracy, uh, so great to see you. Thanks, you guys. All right. Take care.